Psychedelic trips, extreme violence, optional rape scenes, VHS tapes, psychopaths, nuclear bombs. Something about this game screams culturally relevant. It's breathing in and exhaling culture. Hotline Miami 2 takes its predecessor's formula and tweaks it just enough for a fresh experience that many games fail at providing. The soundtrack that the original Hotline Miami is known for is back and it's all so good. Personally, I'm still perplexed as to how it didn't even get a nod at the Game Awards this year. With Hotline Miami 2, you have to approach the game differently from a gameplay perspective, and critics really shunned it for this change, but this is part of the reason it still feels fresh. It's violent, visually arresting, stylish, bombastic, number 5 on the list. I'm not sure that any game on my list comes as tightly packaged as Ori and the Blind Forest. It's so refined that I literally have nothing bad to say about it. Visually it's beautiful. I mean really beautiful. Rarely does a 2D game leave me in a state of awe at the sheer scale of its beauty. It plays perfectly, requires platforming skills, exploration is fantastic, the physics and flow of the gameplay is on point, the pace is perfect. It's basically a love letter to the Metrovania games, and quite possibly the epitome of excellence in that genre. Number 4 on the list. This is the product of the culmination of 28 years of experience with Metal Gear Solid. I couldn't predict the formula would be so radically different, but it was, and I can appreciate the change in its direction. One of the most impressive feats of the Phantom Pain is not allowing you to fall victim to the game's logic. For the most part, if you can think it, you will be able to accomplish missions at your own volition. Championing this design element, the Phantom Pain instills a sense of empowerment that is almost unprecedented. The story and cutscenes are not as media as before, but the philosophical and social commentary still encroaches on your mind. It's the quality and standards we have come to expect from Kojima, but manifested in different design principles. That being said, I really hope this is Kojima's last Metal Gear because I want the spectacular feelings and experiences I've had with Metal Gear Solid over the years to happen again, but with a new IP. Number 3 on the list. Axiom Verge's visually stark but diverse, gritty sci-fi world in a lo-fi resolution is absurdly awesome. A nostalgic throwback to a bygone golden era which doesn't fall victim to its own nostalgia. Axiom Verge constantly pushes and reinvents ideas with its gameplay and visuals. The plethora of guns and their effects is so impressive, it's almost worth the price of admission alone. There's even a deep, twisting mindfuck of a narrative hidden behind the impressive technical and mechanical foundations of the game. Also, this game was made by one person. One person. I don't know what kind of witchery this is, but when you marry the fact that this is a one person game with the quality behind the product, this is easily, easily required gaming. It will probably end up being a cult classic material. Number 2 on the list. AAA gaming at its finest, pushing new heights and setting new bars in the realm of storytelling and world creation. Never have I been so lost in a world, so captivated by the story of its citizens. I can't really remember the last time side quests, if ever at all, were so involved, so relevant, so meaningful. I was so invested in The Witcher 3's world that at times, I took minutes to make decisions, melding over how my actions might permeate and impact the world and its story. There were times I almost cried, there were moments of jubilation, of rage, of disgust, contemplations of moral ambiguity. Very few games have weaved the fabrics of what makes them a game into something that can elicit emotional responses the way The Witcher 3 did. This is required gaming. Number one on the list. 